So the last few days I've been having a bit of a clear round, so I've shifted the work toolbox. The current dilemma is what to do with these two machines. I've got a 12 inch planer thicknesser which weighs about a third of a ton and a 10 inch table saw, neither of which have been used for three years. I've pulled the old uh, Elliott shaper out which is an M10 I'm trying to get that listed on a sale site, get it sold. I've shif shifted the other, the new 14 inch shaper up next to the milling machine. And from the idea is to basically get myself from the end of the working envelope for here back that way, room for a new lathe. Well, not new, another lathe. Um, I'm a bit tight. I've got to get a shot of those two machines, it looks like. I can't see another way of doing it. Um, but first things first is that to go. Um, so we've got a load of junk hanging about now, which I've got to slowly work my way through. But uh, early part of the week, I uh, was tied up shifting a load of uh, stone in a stream to rebuild a uh, stream bank. So I'll give me back a rest. So today's project. I want to make myself a leather working knife. Um, that's what I was hoping to use. That's a piece of um, Damascus steel. It's actually a broadhead arrow, which I uh, picked up a long while ago and reshaped it. It's all right, but it's a bit lightweight for what I'm trying to do. So, having gone through all my various bits of steel that I've got, and I've got a lot. Um, I've got various bits of Damascus, all of which would have been nice, but I'm loath to cut into them at this stage until I've learned a bit more about uh, heat treating. So what I'm, what I'm trying to produce is this, which is a curved blade and a straight rake. I'm going to put a 10mm uh, diameter shank on it and then basically shape it to that effect. Something in the region of 5mm, which is 200 thou thick and then uh, a double bevel each side so that's the cutting edge and you've also got a ripping edge there and then I'll turn, hand turn a uh, nice piece of wood for the handle um, the ideal material for this would have been a leaf spring or some O1 flat tool steel the only, only tool steel I've got in O1 is all round bar and I'm not chopping that down and I've got nothing that big um, so we're back on to the this is the smaller of my two leaf springs uh, it's uh, what's that three and a half inches there and five eighths there versus <coughs> dogs are enjoying the sun that one which is three quarters of an inch, no it's more than that, it's an inch and a quarter thick which I'm not chopping into because it's take me all lean day sawing through it um, I think I got a bit excitable when I spotted that so we marked it out and the plan is to basically I hate working in mess um, take this length off and then Clean up, the, clean up the faces top and bottom, take it down to something like 12 mil or 10, might take it down to 10, mark it all out, and then stick the piece into the four jaw chuck, turn the 30 mil spindle on, so I'll have to rough off, probably hacksaw off the, the waste piece that I need, turn the shaft on it to be here, and then uh, mark it round for the blade, get it all rough shaped, and then uh, Look at heat treating it. We shall see. I seem to remember last time I was cutting through this, it uh, destroyed the hacksaw blade. Not only cheap.
Just to clean up the past of the sawn face. So we had the piece of steel in the stove last night and got it up to a, I would have said a dark red, not quite hot enough. It softened it a bit uh, and I've hacksawed off the bulk of the weight, weight, waste. Um, so I've got to now turn, turn a spigot on the end, 30mm long, aiming for something in the region of uh, 3 eighths to half inch, anything in that area. Um, and that's the bit that will stuff up into the handle. So I've centre drilled the end, stuck that uh, centre in the end just to provide a bit more support. And we'll see how it turns. I'll stick you up in the sky camera how holder and uh, get on with it. That'll do. I'm just taking the, uh, the blank piece down to thickness now. And I'm doing it at an angle to reduce the amount of material required for grinding off on the cutting edge. I'm not pushing it because I've not got it gripped brilliantly. That's off the shaper, so we're gonna. It's a slightly oversized blank. It's took most of the waste off. I'm gonna uh, blue it up, scrape the pattern onto it, rough off the worst of the material, and then do a bit of fire work, get it to roughly the right sort of site, shape and size, and then uh, we'll harden it before doing any more grit, any more work to it. Because I want to see whether that edge will distort. All this has got to come off. Yeah, the, you've got to bevel all the way around that area. So, yeah, bring you back in a bit. So, we're doing a bit of a basically rough grind in it. And uh, we've got about got the shape. It's a bit rough still, but uh, we're just going to clean off the facets with a file now. I did most of the work with the angle grinder. So I'm going to clean off the uh, the facets and then uh, be ready for uh, hardening and then temper it and then grind it to to, to an edge.
That should reduce the amount of grinding and polishing we have to do, or the amount of time it takes. Right, I'll set up and do the hardening. Well, we're better than last time, but it's variable. Um, basically, it's it's harder in this area where where it was hotter, and not as hard here. Um, so I think my problem is basically I can't get enough heat into it with the little torch. I've got a head which is supposed to be, well, it's quite a bit bigger than the other one. So I'm going to swap heads over and see if I can do it one more time and see how that goes. There's some bloody heat left in those bricks, anyway. Bring you back in a bit. Well, that was quicker and seemed to be more uh, consistent. It's catching, but it's catching in the middle area, which I'm not fussed about. I want it soft. Sorry. I'm actually not going to anneal this, thinking about it, because I'm only using it on leather. Um, so the harder the better, really. The only disadvantage is if it gets knocked, it could chip. But uh, that'll be me that's to blame. So I'm going to stick it on the polishing wheel. Um, polish out the marks and whatnot, and then look at sharpening it up and see whether it'll hold an edge. Nothing quite as exciting as a piece of wood leaping out at you. Hmm. Was it really get it out of there? Hey! I think they call that a catch.